Hello, welcome to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. Today we're going to draw the amazing whip scorpion. It is not a true scorpion because guess what? The main difference is the structure here. This whip like structure is actually a tail. And when it's attacked, instead of injecting venom in his victims, he just sprays them with this vinegar smelling liquid. And that's why it's called a vinegar rune. The first thing I notice is, my goodness, it's big. Uh, actually, I have a ruler here and I very carefully, I would like to measure. Wow, just the, from the head until the end of the abdomen, it's five centimeters um, long and it is one centimeter wide. I'll surely have to write that down. Look at the different types of legs. First and foremost, I've noticed these two at the front. They're the thickest and they are full of spikes and they look like this shiny armor. And yes, you're right. They end in pinchers. They are the ones that would allow him to dig burrows and carry all the prey. Then look at this long pair of legs. They look like antenna, but they're not. They're legs. And these very long antenna looking legs, those are just sensory organs. It allows him to, to sense, hmm, where should I go? Where should I go? Where's food? Hmm. And then these other three legs on each side, they're more looking like the regular legs we're used to. They're so hairy. And they're just are for locomotion, for moving from one place to another. Look at how interesting the body, the actual middle part is like divided in two. This front part here, it's almost as big as this. And this is called cephalothorax. We're going to write all these things down, but I wanted to show you. So we're going to use today a non-photo blue pencil or any actually blue would do. And then a graphite pencil that I think might need a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to also use a sharpener and an eraser. So let's start, shall we? I think the most amazing thing that I want to focus first is uh, make sure that I have enough space for the pinchers and then enough space for the cephalothorax and then enough space for the abdomen. So I think I'm going to start by making an oval. I always like to start with ovals and circles. So I'm going to start, I'm going to turn the page a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. I'm going to start with making an oval that is going to be the cephalothorax, the head and the thorax fused together, this part here. This part here is flat and it joins with the abdomen, which is also another oval, but it's a little bit larger, a little bit longer. So I'm just going to make sure that I have these both ovals, which are very much the same width. So let's make sure that both ovals have the same width. There we go. And that's why I like using this non photo blue pencil because then I get to actually make corrections and adjust. And it's almost like a magical pencil because at the end, no one is going to see it. At the very, very tip, this oval becomes a little bit thinner. There we go. And then at here at the beginning, this is our tiny, tiny head right there and it's fuse to form this structure. We're going to add labels and we're going to add all these really cool names. But first I need to make sure that at least I have these. Um, let me move these up a little bit more. There we go. At least that we have both um, 
the main structure. Um, the first thing I want to do once I have these two ovals is to start placing the legs because all the legs, no matter the type of leg, they're all attached to the thorax right here. So we have one big, big leg coming from here. And then we have the thin one coming from here. And at this point, I'm just going to put uh, placeholders. Then uh, we have one here. Then we have one here. And then we have the last one here. And we're just going to draw them on this side first. And then if we have time, we will draw them right here. For this one, I know now that this um, is bent, it's like this. Usually it would be all open, it can articulate, and at the end, imagine if in my at the tip of my um, at the tip of my index I had like a clock. So first I'm gonna draw what I see, and then on this end I'm gonna draw the pincher all open. So what I see first is that it has like a structure here. That is very interesting. It's like a square. One, two, three. It's like a square. And from this square, there is another structure. It's like an armor, like total armor. From these, I have another structure here. And I have a hole here, so I need to make sure that I that I don't draw anything there. And then that's all I see, really. Something like this. Because it's very bent. One thing I'm going to add when I go into graphite is that I notice here there are so many spikes. So many spikes and a big, big spike right there. If I was to see these arm open this is what i would see i would see this square like this one that that wouldn't change much but then i would see this very very big very threatening interesting looking structure as this and this would be that pincher I'm gonna move this down a little bit so you can see it better and very gently with the specimen so this is what this would look like if it was all extended I'm gonna do it with graphite so don't worry too much about detail now I'm just blocking main structures I have two eyes here at the front and like other um, arachnids it also has three eyes on the sides one two and three they're over there first i'm going to start with this one here that is open and this one i know because i researched i did a little bit of research before um, because I knew the specimen had the claws bent. So I did some research to find out how would these claws actually look like if he, because it's a male, if he had his claws all out. Because it's a specimen and that's how it's being preserved. So we need to be very, very careful. And we cannot... Um, yeah, we cannot touch it. So if this was a, if this was a specimen in nature, if this we were to see this amazing, amazing creature in his natural habitat, we would see this claws out and all these spikes out. And these actually. This allows uh, for this uh, whip scorpion to grab on his victims and have a nice dinner. 
So let's do what we see here. What I see here is all these little spikes. I see at least four of them. And then I see that this segment closes like this. And then I see the next segment. And I'm just drawing what I see. This is what I researched and this is what I am seeing now on the specimen. And this is the spike that we saw over there, but we see it here. And then we see, if I look closer, I can see these two parts all folded in. I'm going to draw the tiny two eyes in the front. There's like a nice ridge here. And I guess here we would see all the mouth parts, but from where I am, I cannot see them. And then something that I find very cool is there is like a ridge alongside that ends in this flat line and the other end exactly the same. And I am sure also that maybe this specimen is a little bit dry, so maybe nature is less flat. That's something I would need to look in the book and see whether it's normal that it's so flat or whether it's something that has to do with uh, the preservation process. I didn't forget my cluster of um, lateral eyes. So we have two eyes on the front plus one, two, three, four, five, and six eyes on the side, on the sides. And there's three on each side. This leg here goes far beyond the page. So I'm just gonna draw them a little bit bent. So I'm gonna draw the leg has one first segment and then it has another segment. And this is where I am going to, in my drawing, bend this leg in a little bit. So I get to include the whole thing on my page. I'm gonna go with my graphite pencil and I see that there's a little bit of a thickened structure and then it's much, it's like a very straight through line. So I'll make two parallel lines there. Maybe a little bit. Let's see, it's a little bit curvy. There we go. And then at the end, it thickens right there right at the joint and then we have another one and this is pretty much straight line although at the very end as well it thickens and it's the same approximately thickness as the previous one the one that we bent in our drawing not in the specimen it's also very long And it thickens a little bit at the end, but it's very thin. It's very thin. It looks like an antenna. And then the last piece, the foot of this leg is going to be a lot of tiny, tiny segments that are all 
on a curve. Let's try to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least eight. I would need a lens. So that's going to be our first, first um, leg. And this leg, as I said, this leg is a sensory organ. This leg is a sensory organ. And it looks like an antenna. The second leg, let's go with our non-photo blue pencil, also comes out of a structure that is a little bit thicker. And then this segment is very short, very short, approximately until here. And it has a curve at the bottom. And then it thickens a little bit here. And then this also has a curve, but less prominent. Then it's articulated with this other piece. It's very short. It's very short and it has like this, almost like a triangle shape. Then it has another long one. that also thickens a little bit at the end. And then the last, the next piece is a little bit thinner. And the last piece, very thin. If I look closer, I see it has two tiny claws. So when I shift to my graphite pencil, I can add a little bit of the detail because I see that this piece comes from this piece. And then this other piece is joined. And it's very hairy. Oh my, it's super hairy. You have no idea how many hairs and then the two claws. So I know that each of these pieces has a name and we're going to write it in a second. And the names are very similar to the bones in our legs. If you touch your leg, you see there is like a very, very, very hard structure, right, right in the middle of your leg and that's the bone so this first segment this one here is the femur this one here the next one is the patella this one here the next the long and thin one is the tibia after that we have the tarsus And at the end of the tarsus, we have with the claws, the tarsal claws. Let's do another leg, shall we? It has the exact same uh, parts, but they're arranged differently. So the first, we're going to see, actually, we see the head of the femur, the trochanter. I'm going to write that word here because it's very cool. Trochanter. That is the piece of the femur that is the thickest, right where it joins the, um, the thorax. That's the trochanter. So we can see that very well there. It's like a little hat. Then we see the rest of the femur. And it's, yeah, it's kind of curvy and nice. We see a little bit widened here. And then we see how this leg bends in an angle. Do you see that? So I can first make a line knowing where the leg is and then add the pieces around it. That's one way of doing it. I'm sure there must be another one. 
So then after the tibia, after the femur, we have the patella and then the long one is the tibia. And then we're getting into the tarsals, uh, the tarsal bones, which, which are just making the foot. So I'm going to change to my graphite. And in this case, I can see very well how the femur, it looks like the femur and the trochanter are different, but they're part of the same structure. They're fused. Then we see how this piece comes out of here, the patella, which has the same name as the bone that you have in your knee, the patella. If you touch your knee, that's, that's what the bone is called. It's a tiny, tiny bone, circular bone. Then after the patella, we have the tibia, the long one. It's a little bit shorter than this one. Do you see that? Could it be that my perspective, could it be that actually as I go back is smaller. I think it's my drawing. I think I should have made it a little bit longer. And the two tarsal claws at the end. Let's make this very last interesting leg. If you notice here, we can actually see a very much larger trochanter very much prominent like i wonder if the, the hind legs have bigger trochanters for a reason i know that this leg is almost on top but i'm going to separate it a little bit with a little bit of artistic license so we can see it better also it makes sense because these legs move around so I'm not um, breaking the anatomy of the leg. Each of these pieces is a joint and it moves like our, my finger. That's the patella and after the patella, the long tibia. And then the little tarsus with a little claws. So let's do exactly the same thing as we've been doing. That's the tibia and drawing insect legs. Oh my, oh my. It's such a complicated and hard task. So thank you for your patience. I really love drawing insect legs. Yeah. And these are also very hairy. And the little tarsal claws over there. So there we go. These are, um, if I wanted to draw the other half, I could do the exact same thing on this side. But for the sake of moving forward, we're going to continue drawing other structures that are also very cool. For example, with my non photo blue, I really want to draw all the segments of the abdomen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I noticed that the eighth one ends like this because there's a structure that looks like a cylinder that comes out of the end and we know what that is. That is this like whip-like structure. This is actually a, a tail. And as we said before, Wow, it has so much hair, so much hair. It produces, um, it's not a venom, it's like a liquid that is, um, it's like vinegar smelling liquid. Oh, I think you cannot see it. One second, I'm gonna move it like that. Vinegar smelling liquid. 
So he sprays his victims with it. And they don't like the smell and they leave him alone. I would like to add the segments of the abdomen. And I know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight segments. If I divide eight in two, that is four. So let's see if I divide these in two, I should have four on each. If I divide each of the four in two, I should have two. So let's see if that works out. If I divide these, I have two. If I divide these, I have two. And let's see what happens when I divide these in two. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That worked out great. So let's now change to the graphite and let's start drawing each segment. And I notice something right away is that each segment is born a little bit underneath the previous one. And some are a little bit more curvy than others, curving inwards like this third segment and some curving outwards. And I don't know if this is because of the preservation and how it dried or whether this is also something I would see in nature. But I would like to draw exactly what I see. When I come to the fifth segment, I start to notice that we're getting thinner. So I need to make sure that I follow my blueprint a little bit. And I also see that the lines get a little bit curvy that way. And the very last segment, it has a curve. Let's see, I made a mistake here. This segment goes around this kind of cylindrical structure. And I'm going to draw it. I'm sure this can move. And in this case, it's moving this way, but it could be, I'm sure it could do all these movements. I wonder. I'm going to add that as a question. Can the whip move around? Because imagine if you can move around, you can spray much more critters. So I think that would make sense that that could be move around. I'm going to move this a little bit on the top so you can see it. And then to draw at the whip, I'm just going to follow the blue line that I drew earlier. And it's very thin. It's almost like a hair, particularly at the end. It's a little bit thicker here. But as I go to the very end, it kind of becomes almost like a hair. And there's so much hair. There's so many hairs. Psh, 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 psh. Oh my. Yeah. They're thin. They're short. I cannot touch them because it's a specimen, so I don't want to touch it. It seems like a very, very delicate structure and the hairs get much thinner as we go till the very, very tip of this whip structure. So we did our segments, but as we were doing the segments, I noticed that there's like two dots on each side of the abdomen. So I want to make sure that I draw them. I see them here, one and two. I also see them here. I also see them here and they have very interesting color. They're like grayish blue 
And again, I don't know if this is because of the specimen, how it dried. But I no longer see them here on the first and on the last segment. So I'm going to start with a little brown. And any color really will do. But what I want to do is I really want to start adding just a little bit of brown. And I'm sure you see all this texture. So I see a lot of interesting shadows and I see definitely that the edges are going to be darker. I'm going to put the thing here as so a weight. I'm going to start very light brown and with the same color, the edges, I'm going to darken them a little bit just by adding a little bit of pressure. Also here, where the abdomen meets the cephalothorax. That's a good word that I wanted to write down here. So I'm going to write here cephalothorax thorax which means that the head and the thorax are fused and this so this is the cephalothorax and this is the abdomen and it has segments so that's what is called segmented The different legs that we saw, this one here, these legs at the front, those, oh my, those were the pedipalps. And these are the ones that end in a pincer. And this moves and allows the animal to capture all the critters that he wants to eat and also to dig burrows. So it's for eating and for eating, for carrying, catching prey. So I wanted to add those notes because they were very interesting. There's so many interesting details about these um, vinegar runes. As I am adding a little bit of just like a overall brown. And notice how I'm not coloring those tiny, tiny dots yet. Um, I also see there's a difference, like the legs are more like silver looking. They have a little bit of brown, but it's much more different. It's like a very, yeah, it's a much different brown. So I think, let's see what I have here. I think because they have... Hmm. You see, you can try colors and if you don't like them, you don't have to use them. I'm going to use the same brown color for the legs, but very lightly, very lightly. So, so far I'm using the same color. I know that I see different colors very particularly. Oops, I forgot to close this here. Very particularly on the front legs. These ones are much, um, almost like a gray silver. I don't have that color, but guess what? I can make it. I can totally make it. But first I want to add an overall tone. I'm going to put this here so you can see it well. Yeah, I'm going to add an overall very, very light brown. Because I think my overall color is going to be bluish, very light bluish. I realize I forgot to close some, some of these structures. So let me, yeah, let me actually close this structure here and here. And always, that's something that is very consistent throughout. There's some areas that are going to be lighter and areas that are going to be darker. And it depends really on 
where the light comes from. It really depends. For example, these areas here are always going to be a little bit dark, closer to the edge, so they come from underneath. So I can go now and do a little bit of dark, darker brown. It's the same color, the exact same color. These areas here are a little bit darker. Also the edges of these spikes are a little bit darker and I can see there's a little bit of dark here and very nice dark here, even though it's going to be bluish. But that's going to totally help with adding some volume. Like as you can see now, suddenly all this has a lot of volume. And these in the back, also a little bit darker. And the same thing here. I'm going to imagine that the light comes from there. So the light is coming from here. So areas here are going to be darker. So all these areas here might be a little bit darker. I really like these spikes here. That's crazy awesome. Like these spikes here. And don't forget about our eyes. Because guess what? Compound eye means that it's made out of many, 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 many eyes. So let me write that here. Compound eye. And as we said, it has two in the front and three on each side. So I'm going to add a little bit, as I said, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Because I don't have a silver color. But I think if I add a little bit of blue overall, it's going to make it look silvery. And that's the magic of all the colors that you can use is that you don't have to have the exact same color. You can actually mix them on the page. And now we're going realistic. We're trying to copy the actual color that we see in nature. But if you feel super creative, you can also go crazy and color your vinegaroon purple. I'm sure there's going to be a purple vinegaroon. If only in our imagination. That's so valid. So I'm going to start adding with the same color a little bit of shadows. And as you can see, suddenly we have a very, very interesting volume that we have created. And we're going to do the same with our legs. Not our legs, but his legs. But yeah, there's like a very interesting dark blue that I want to add here and here. And when I hold a pencil like this, when I'm coloring is because there's so much detail that otherwise I would miss it. Usually I like to add color like this, but there's such tiny areas that I need to be very careful. But yeah, there's definitely a different color from the color of the legs to the color of the abdomen. And funny enough, this is the same color as these tiny dots. Ooh, so I'm going to put that there. And because they're a little bit, it's like if someone had poked with a tiny finger. So I want to make them darker a little bit. Because they're like almost, almost deep. So when I switch to my brown, I notice that it's going to be darker in the areas that are underneath and on the sides. So underneath each 
segment and on the sides and I'm gonna hold it like this a little bit so I can yeah and there's also some things I notice as I am looking now is that there's so much texture there's so much and I don't know it's because the specimen uh, had adventures while he was alive there's so many scratches and yeah I bet he had adventures or I don't know if it's because of preservation so that's something that leads leads me to my my books and and, and read more about this amazing animal and, and leaves me with so much um, still to learn what I'm doing is I am pressing a little bit harder under each segment and on the sides because the areas that are underneath the segment are a little bit darker and then I lift the pressure when I am on areas that are a little bit lighter and I press harder on the areas that are a little bit darker I'm going to do that here too. Overall, this area here is going to be a little bit darker. Because the sides are a little bit hidden from the light. And overall, the top is what's going to be super light. And you have this very nice highlight there. Do you see that? I really, really, really want to draw that too. So in order to do that, I noticed that around the dots on one side, there's like a very interesting circle and the rest is dark except that circle. So I want to do that whenever I see it. I'm going to draw darker and leave that area lighter. I'm going to do the same thing here. That is so interesting. And darker. And as I come to the bottom of the segments, I see that there's also a light here. Not only there. So I'm going to leave that uncolored. And then the very last one has like highlights or areas that are light brown that look a little bit like that and then this one I see that it has a light there that is light on that end and I'm gonna observe here it doesn't have those things so I'm just gonna continue what I was doing before but now by observing that look at that effect it's so cool it has also some highlights here so let's see if I can it has like dark there and then it's almost the opposite now the inside is darker so let's see if I can do that it's almost as if it has a dark circle and then a dark circle and a dark circle on top of the blue and then another one here and it has an area that is a little bit lighter and here I barely see the difference between light and dark it's very dark wow that is so cool so just by trying to look exactly at my specimen look at that i created this awesome light and shadow this is really cool isn't it i'm gonna add a little bit of darker brown on the legs because there's some areas that are a little bit darker but overall i am happy with the blue tone of the legs and i can go with a darker brown if i want to But I just want to make sure that the areas that are away from the light are a little bit darker because I can see it here. I'm trying to draw what I see. 
And it's, it's, it's tough, eh? It's not easy, so... Don't worry too much. I also see this, maybe it's because of all the hairs. They're starting to, you know, as the leg becomes thinner and thinner, I start seeing all the hairs together more and more. So maybe that's why I see that the colors are changing. It starts from a very light gray into more like a reddish brown. So I don't know. I wonder if it's because of the all the hairy bits and pieces. And as the leg thins out, I see less of the um, of the blue of this grayish uh, um, tone. But there, I really want to draw all those legs, and I think I have a color <laughs> that might work well. It's kind of a reddish. I'm gonna make sure I sharpen it, so I make very sharpen, very sharpen, sharpen. Ah, there's so many, so many, so many, so many tiny. And they're all facing this way. I don't see any hair like that. I think they're all facing that way. It would be interesting to ask him if he has to brush his hairs every day or use conditioner. Oh, let me see. Before I, I add hairs into the antenna. Yeah, there's some, but they're very thin, so they're definitely less visible. So I need to observe better before I start adding hairs. Let's see, there's hairs here, here. Oh yes, there's a lot of hair here. A lot of hairs. And I wonder, I wonder about these hairs. Are they some sort of a sensory way? of detecting things around. Yeah. Because all these animals are, um, this, this whip scorpion is a nocturnal animal, which means he likes to go out at night. And, and he's also carnivorous. Uh, I'm going to write that down because that's super cool. So he's, he's carnivorous, he's nocturnal first, nocturnal, which means that he goes at night. This is the, the moon with all the stars. So we remember that he goes out at night. And also he is carnivorous. And that means that he likes eating insects, and millipedes. Oh, there's a lot of hair here too. He likes eating all sorts of creatures, uh, isopods, but also, you know what? This is very big. If this is, but also, guess what? He also, he also can eat a cockroach and crickets. I mean, I wouldn't like to be um, a slug or a worm around this guy because if he's hungry, he might just, might as well eat me. Oh, my, I need to sharpen my, my brush better. I'm just adding some areas that are a little bit darker. areas that are a little bit darker even though he's he has blue pinchers there's still some areas that that I want to make sure they're a little bit darker and here on the surface um, I see also that there's some it's a lot of texture here and again I don't know if it's because of the the way the whoops the way the specimen dried or the way that he is in real life. But I would like to, yeah, I would like to add a little bit of all the, the different texture that I see. It also has a lot of, I see it has little, little, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of dots everywhere, really. <laughs> A 
little bit of dark areas. It's definitely the top part here is lighter. So I'm going to leave that there. And then where the eyes are, that's going to be a little bit darker for sure. adding all these lines I'm adding so much texture and I also I don't know I see also like it has interesting colors I think I'm gonna add a little bit of red around here because I see it has a little bit of red and this is one thing I like about insects this is one thing I like about bugs is that they're all shiny and they have so many different colors depending on how the light hits them. Uh, let's see if I can use a dark brown, this one here, to add a little bit of texture on top. Because I see it has definitely the darker area that we did before, but also so much texture. Ooh, yeah. And this area that we left uncolored is working so well to create that depth. And if you have lost your lines, you can go back with your graphite, for example, here. And I might as well go around, for example, here. I lost a little bit of my femur and a little bit of my trochanter. Yeah, so you make sure that you don't lose those. And just as a final, final touch, I think I'm going to use a little bit of black just to make sure that some areas are super dark. Like, for example, areas that are closer to the body. And areas that are totally away from the sun or from the light that is So I'm just going to have some fun with my title and I hope you too because I really would like to color my title with the same colors that I use on the drawing. So this is a whip scorpion and it's not a real true scorpion. Or P on, and it's also called a V ne gar room. 